This is TCE Theology and Current Events number 32, St. Vincent of Larens on how to navigate a church crisis. What I'm going to read to you is my blog post from yesterday, but I thought this was important enough to put in video and audio form too. You know, many Catholics think that Catholic means universal, and they are correct. But they make the mistake of thinking this is universal not through history, but just today in this current church crisis. Today we look to the great saint and doctor of the church of the 5th century, St. Vincent of Larens, for how to navigate a church crisis when many bishops believe and teach different things. St. Vincent of Larens was one of the very, very few bishops who fought against the global 5th century heresy of Arianism believed by 99% of the bishops of his day. We will see in a couple minutes in his writings why the word Catholic does not mean universal, for example, as in an opinion poll of a certain time of history, but rather that Catholicism is that which has been believed, quote, everywhere, always, and by all, end quote, Catholics of the past. I will link the New Advent website so you can check these quotes that I'm going to read you. The first quote that we're going to start with is, Moreover, in the Catholic Church itself, says St. Vincent of Larens, all possible care must be taken that we hold that faith which has been believed everywhere, always, by all. For that is truly, and in the strictest sense, Catholic, which, as the name itself and the reason of the thing declare, comprehends all universally. This rule we shall observe if we follow universality, antiquity, consent. We shall follow universality if we confess that one faith to be true which the whole church throughout the world confesses. Antiquity, if we in no way depart from those interpretations which is manifest were notoriously held by our holy ancestors and fathers. So now I'm going to give you five quotes from the 5th century St. Vincent of Larens and the heresies he fought in his day. And in between each quote, I will give you my appraisal of modernism in the 21st century. So I'll just say St. Vincent of Larens with his quote. And then I will read you how I think this applies to modernism today and identifying how we can navigate a church crisis when most Catholics don't believe Catholicism directly from this great doctor of the church and saint of the 5th century. St. Vincent of Larens writes, What then will a Catholic Christian do if a small portion of the church have cut itself off from the communion of the universal faith? What surely but prefer the soundness of the whole body to the unsoundness of a pestilent and corrupt member? What if some novel contagion seek to infect not merely an insignificant portion of the church, but the whole? Then it will be his care to cleave to antiquity, which in the present cannot possibly be seduced by any fraud of novelty. Me. Of course, the first sentence might not be used by traditionalists, but rather against traditionalists. Namely, if a small portion of the church have cut itself off from the communion of the universal faith, it should be excised from the body. Indeed, are not those today who attend the traditional Latin Mass and hold to the same faith as our great-grandparents simply a small portion of the church? Indeed, we are small, and some would even say pestilent. However, St. Vincent of Larens is again asking us to consider not only the one billion Catholics living currently, but all the Catholics who have ever lived. How do we know this is his assertion? Because he links the word pestilent with the two words novel contagion. In in other words, any new doctrine developed by so-called Catholics must always be seen as a novel infection affecting only certain sad times of church history. The cure for the cancer of any such novel contagion in any dark point of church history was just written by the great doctor of the church, quote, it will be his care to cleave to antiquity, which in the present cannot possibly be seduced by any fraud of novelty, end quote. St. Vincent of Larens, so also when the Arian poison had infected not an insignificant portion of the church, but almost the whole world, so that a sort of blindness had fallen upon almost all the bishops of the Latin tongue, circumvented partly by force, partly by fraud, and was preventing them from seeing what was most expedient to be done in the midst of so much confusion, then whoever was a true lover and worshiper of Christ preferred the ancient belief to the novel misbelief, escaped the pestilent infection. Me. 
Again, we see that it is possible for God to allow 99% of the Catholic bishops of the world to fall into error in the darkest times of church history, especially when Catholics live under a great punishment for God for their own sins. But the litmus test as to whether 99% of the Catholic bishops of the world at any time of church history fall into the darkness of heresy is if they, quote, prefer the ancient belief to the new or novel misbelief, end quote. So in other words, when there is confusion in church history, this great saint, this great doctor of the church, St. Vincent of Laren, shows that those who have new beliefs are living in blindness, but one who may be found to be a true lover and worshiper of Christ holds the ancient belief, which is always found to be the same that all dead Catholics before us believed. Indeed, these dead Catholics are the most alive in Christ, as you well know. St. Vincent of Larens, but might it be that we invent these charges out of hatred and novelty and zeal for antiquity? Whoever is disposed to listen to such an insinuation, let him at least believe the blessed Ambrose, who, deploring the acerbity of the time, says in the second book of his work, addressed to the Emperor Gratian, Enough now, O God Almighty! Have we expiated with our own ruin, with our own blood, the slaughter of confessors, the banishment of priests, and the wickedness of such extreme impiety? It is clear beyond question that they who have violated the faith cannot remain in safety. Okay, me. You know, I was just telling a young family the other night that it is all the holiest priests I know, those much holier than me, who always get put on the shelf by their bishops or suspended under false accusations, while the corrupt and heretical priests and bishops continue unchecked, nearly to a man in the 21st century. Indeed, the heresy of modernism executes the exact thing that St. Ambrose begged God to end, to quote, the banishment of priests, end quote. St. Ambrose and St. Vincent of Larens lamented the sidelining of true priests, not heretical priests. So also, we too, in the 21st century, must pray for the end of this punishment from God that he allows, Namely, apostasy from the top down is prophesied, most likely, in the third secret of Fatima. St. Vincent of Larens, but in this divine virtue, as we may call it, exhibited by these confessors, we must note especially that the defense which they then undertook in appealing to the ancient church was the defense, not a part, but of the whole body. For it was not right that men of such eminence should uphold with so huge an effort the vague and conflicting notions of one or two men, or should exert themselves in the defense of some ill-advised combination of some petty province, but adhering to the decrees and definitions of the universal priesthood of Holy Church, the errors of apostolic and Catholic truth, they chose rather to deliver up themselves than to betray the faith of universality and antiquity, for which cause they were deemed worthy of so great glory as not only to be accounted confessors, but rightly and deservedly to be accounted foremost among confessors. Me. Notice here that St. Vincent of Larens is basically saying that the bad guys of church history always promote notions that he can only describe as vague, where the good guys of church history hold to a faith he can only describe as apostolic and Catholic. You know, modernism has infected the whole church today, but it started just as St. Vincent of Laren said about Arianism with, quote, the vague and conflicting notions of one or two men, end quote. Heretics always use vague language so they can be slimy and sneak away like a snake. But those who hold to apostolic Catholicism choose, quote, the faith of universality and antiquity, end quote. Notice again that for St. Vincent of Larens, this great doctor of the church, universality does not mean this erroneous idea, that which is believed by every Catholic in an isolated time of church history, but rather St. Vincent directly links the word universality to antiquity. That is, the Catholic faith is the faith of our fathers. Our faith is that which is believed not by, say, a bishop's conference, but that which has been believed Everywhere, always, and by all, as the saint said. And last quote and commentary, St. Vincent of Larens. But someone will ask, how is it then that certain excellent persons and of position in the church are often permitted by God to preach novel doctrines to Catholics? The reason is clearer than day why divine providence sometimes permits certain teachers of the churches to preach new doctrines. That the Lord your God may try you, he says, 
And assuredly, it is a great trial when one whom you believe to be a prophet, a disciple of prophets, a teacher and defender of the truth, whom you have folded to your chest with the utmost veneration and love, when such a one of a sudden secretly and furtively brings in noxious errors which you can neither quickly detect, being held by the prestige of former authority, nor lightly think it right to condemn, being prevented by affection for your old master. Okay, my last commentary on this. You know, notice that God only allows good Catholics to be betrayed doctrinally by a bad hierarchy, not so that such good Catholics go to hell, but so that they have a higher place in heaven through identifying the classic truths of the Catholic faith around such bad leadership. Now, of course, it's no fun having bad leadership in the church, but it is only permitted, and the saint quoted directly scripture, that the Lord your God may try you or test you. Consider how many lukewarm Catholics have had to Google classic Catholic teaching just the past two years alone in order to get to the bottom of a thousand conflicting opinions found in the current bishops. Even non-Catholics are Googling the truths of traditional Catholicism not despite our wonky leadership, but because of our wonky leadership. Glory be to God that out of this confusion is springing new converts who are discovering apostolic Catholicism, traditional Catholicism, and our Holy Fathers. They are discovering the one Catholic faith found in antiquity, as St. Vincent of Lerins calls it. This is the only safe and guaranteed path to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the one and only Savior of the world. And may Almighty God bless you. Okay.